Fey as old ones. I don't know. I, I feel like this is a really interesting concept to me because I feel like Fey are literally everything. I feel like for me personally, I always fall back on them being like little fairies a yeah. lot of the time. But you know what changed my view on them? Um, I suppose it was years ago now. It was Pan's Labyrinth. Yeah. Pan's Labyrinth, I think, <clears throat> is one of the best examples yeah. of Fey and how you can really twist them. Yeah. And I honestly do think that like, you know, even your guy, Mr. Hans, could be considered like an old one. You need to have that bizarre, weird, yeah, I get uh, it. unnerving, not being able to really understand what's going on at any given time. And I feel, feel like Pan's Gap did a good job of that, like explaining it through the eyes of a little girl. Yeah. You know, I thought it was actually really well done. But like, you're enough talking about Pan's Gap. Can we watch Pan's Gap <clears throat> tonight? Do you want to watch Pounds Up? Yeah, okay, but Mr. Hans <laughs> gave me fucking nightmares for weeks. All right, look, let's get into this thread. I think it's an interesting <clears throat> topic. Let's let's just do this. The coming campaign I'm running is very much going to be Fey themed, but much more Guillermo del Toro slash Lovecrafty and Fey than Midsummer Night's Dream Fey. I'm going to roll Fey and aberrations together. The last campaign in the same setting involved a continental holocaust and breakdown of civilization. So there's sort of this rebuilding golden age of humanity. Transitional time from sword and board to pike and shot. Petty barons, trade princes, and city-states thing going on juxtaposed against what the fuck is going on in the woods. Honestly, I, I, I'm down for this. This actually yeah, sounds, sounds really, really good. The previous campaign culminated with what was an isolated plane being converged into a sphere. The, the Chris Chan merge. Oh, no. <laughs> I like the idea of Fey being elder things, native to this realm, rather than beyond, and by rejoining the cosmos at large. The Fey have been re-empowered by their proximity to the stars, when before they were cut off in a pocket dimension and denied the nourishment of the cosmos. The campaign is going to start very on the ground of gritty, level 1 stuff. The basic premise is that bad shit is coming out of the woods, so a lot of city-state infighting has been put on hold. Won't last, LMAO. (laughs) While free companies are sent to deal with oil bears, dragon whelps, and wear things. Instead of a strict summer court slash winter court, it's more likely to be various Arkfey and their offspring. With names like the tall man in the woods, the many-fingered boy, and the slumbering nothing. I want druidism to lean into this Lovecraftian slash pagan worship juxtaposed against the very aesthetically Catholic saint reverence of the cities and towns. I like the idea of following a bloodborne slash berserk style of weirdness and body horror escalation, with elves returning fulfilly and very hellboy golden army type thing. Oh man, that was such a good movie. I like the contrast of humans being absolute bastards to each other, even in the midst of this horrible, fairing uprising, where mankind is being taught why they once feared the dark. Anyone have any cool ideas to play with? I love this idea. I think it's really cool. Mm-hmm. I think it's got so much going on. And it's, I feel like a lot of the time, a lot of the time, um, was the coasty, anything with Faye, I can't help but feel like it turns into like, it's too dreary a lot yeah, of the time. Yeah. For me, I feel like it's very... You know what it feels like to me? It feels very World of Warcraft Night Elves, if that's any way of putting it, and I can't explain why, but I feel like that's the way they go a lot of the time. Yeah. And I kind of really enjoy this idea of like a body horror fae. I like that. And I like the idea of them like being Eldritch Abomin... I, I, the best way I've ever heard an Eldritch Abomination being explained was... I think it was that Carl Sagan where he talks about the fourth dimension mm-hmm. and the idea of the people... I'll, I'll link the video down below. Watch it afterwards because it's really interesting if you don't know much about the fourth dimension. But the idea of these people that live in 2D world... The idea of them... what What is like 3D? Like if they came down you're only going to see a slight... Se- segment of them yeah could we even comprehend it yeah and I, I feel like that's something that Lovecraft does very well yeah. with a lot of that sort of yeah abominations I like the idea of lots of body horror getting involved as a result of fairy exposure your skin and flesh turning gelatinous moth like wings and appendages crawling out of you gestating gaggles of bone-eating insectile pixies, and the like. 
your parts turning into other parts just because of the arcane eldritch irradiation, becoming beautiful and horrible and not a person anymore, forgetting who they are after the Fae stole their names, yearning to be human once again. You know what this sounds like? Ugh. This sounds like a werewolf almost. Like a Fae... Fae touched? Would that be a good word for this? Yeah. I, I, oh, that, that's I cool. like it. That, that could... That makes... That, that, you know what this is? This is the birth story of a Wendigo. <gasps> yeah. I said, I said the other day I was getting really tired of Wendigos. I feel like this is a perfect setting to actually use Wendigos and really, like, rework them. What I would really love to do in this, I think I would go a weird mix of Native American and Celtoid Druid and, like, mash them two together. Yeah. Mixing shamans <clears throat> and druids together into, like, a weird mishmash. That's why I think I would take most of my inspiration yeah. from for this concept anyway. A plague of undeath has swept in from the sea, but it is being disregarded as madness and rumour. Strange beasts wander the wilderness, and hamlets and farmsteads are found abandoned. Dragons are coming down from the mountains, reasserting their place at the top of the food chain. It's only a matter of time until what's changing the beasts of the earth and the trees of the forest, and the people of the wilds start to change the dragons of the skies into something else too. The Fae do not want to exterminate life as the last grand threat did. They just want to improve it. And whether it's a want or a need, or just some basic side effect of their existence, is indeterminable. I've got a, I've got a good idea. I've got a really good idea, right? This could mix in with maybe, think of when the Europeans first show up in the New World. Uh-huh. And the, the disease moves far quicker than... Yeah, because it's me. Exactly. Like bet, COVID. Yeah, but no, but Basically. it moves so quickly. So they hear like all the, uh, there's the moves of these like new like space people that have came from the sea, and uh, you know they do all this weird stuff because you can imagine the moves that you would have of these people. So this is like maybe like the Native Americans interpretation mm-hmm. of, and it would be the end times because it's. I'm sorry, but look at the rumors that were coming out of fucking Wuhan whenever. Oh just yeah! Started. Exactly, and that's with uh, high speed fiber optic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. News. So God knows what it'd be like back then. Yeah, back then for what? what and how- it would be like Chinese whispers. Yeah, exactly. Because you're only hearing. You're not. Uh, you're not reading. You can't send like an mm. article. Yeah. So you're only hearing. Mm. So it's a massive game of Chinese whispers. I do. I, I do think the idea of a great plague fits this very well. Like yeah. end times, and again, it buys into the whole like. Rebirth, yeah. Maybe would that be a fair way to say, like, you know, the planet needs to die to be born again, like a phoenix of sorts, yeah. or like you know, decay is part of nature and all that type of stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Psst. Hey, leaning closer. This is fucking ASMR channel now. You know it's pretty fucking beast. Titties. <laughs> Go see titties. <laughs> Lots of titties. All the titties. <laughs> Go over to the website, check out all the models. You guys know the score. We have some really nice looking models over there. And we have a lot of... Uh, sci-fi gothic? Yeah. Let's call them sci-fi gothic. And if models isn't your shit, we have loads of subclasses and we keep adding them every other week or so. We, we, we Look, add we, a lot. We, we, we got a lot. D, D, Look, guys. we've got big brains. We add shit. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, go over to the website, check out everything. If you haven't subscribed... What the fuck you doing? Hit subscribe, hit the notification bell as well, and let's get back to the video. Every week we're going to be doing a giveaway of the new pinup model of the month, or if models isn't your thing, all of our homebrew content. If you want to be in with a chance to win the giveaway, all you need to do is subscribe. That's it. Hit the subscribe button. That's it. Do it. Do it now. But last week's winner was this guy. Well done. Yay. Round of applause. Everybody stands up and claps. But enough of that, let's get back to the video. I want to start the campaign session one in media res in the middle of a fight with a farmer who sold his soul to the forest and is now a mutated awful thing that at half health has butchered the half dozen mooks in their mercenary outfit already as the game starts. I want him to be weird, but not oh god oh fuck weird. I mean that picture you put some good camp there. It's yeah. oh god oh fuck. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking of describing him as bloated, with blood-like thick milk uh, imbued with moonlight. Ugh. 
and his skin is gelatinous and pale. Any detail in his face has been lost due to the swollen mass of soft flesh, and his limbs are elongated and lanky. He wields a lumberjack's axe graced with the light of the moon, and swings it erratically as he leaps around in the bog they're fighting him in. He has javelins and peeling his back that he occasionally throws. He does a lot of grabs and throws and area-based attacks, so I want a crash course for my players on positioning and using the environment during a set-piece fight. At phase two, whenever feels appropriate, I guess. He sprouts a gnarled moth wing from his neck that he uses to painfully flutter up to 15 foot and overcome the sucking depth of the swamp water. All the while he is howling and yawping and screaming gibberish, with the occasional intelligible word or phrase condemning the players to hell or screaming how much he hates them. I don't know about you guys, but this feels like, it feels very Dark Souls-esque. Yeah. But it's actually like, oh, I, you know what, this... I like it. This is exactly... That, that's all you're going to hear from me at the end of I like it. Yeah, I, I, feel, <laughs> like I, can't, like I feel like I've got nothing to top any yeah. of this shit. Because it's genuine. It's like, no, I'm, I'm down for this. You know what this is? This side, it feels very X and it feels very mm-hmm. the imagination. This is exactly what I, want, what I wanted. The imaginations of Wendigos and the interpreting. Yeah. Like, you know, give them a lot of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've made it clear their jobs up until now have been guarding caravans, night watch, and shaking down farmers for protection money, so this whole encounter is supposed to feel way over their head. They thought they were here to arrest a man accused of murder. I want them to feel the tone of this is a horror game full of weirdness, right off the bat, but I'm worried this is too weird to start off with a slow burn. The idea is that things would kind of revert back to normal right away, but this encounter would always kind of be in the back of their minds during their mundane early adventures, making them paranoid. No, this, this sounds like a one it'll be, to it'll be one of the, I'm not going in the fucking woods, you go in the woods, I'm not doing it, <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm not doing it! Yeah, you need to make this thing strong, so you do, you need to make this like pretty much like the, the only combat encounter you're going to have that entire game yeah. will be this, and I feel like... No, I, 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 or not even strong. You know, it'd be good like have something like this, but then have like the effect of, you know, like the silence from Doctor Who, oh, where yeah. they're left with something on their body once they encounter it. Oh yeah, but they, yeah. they don't remember, and it comes back in flashbacks. Oh yeah, and stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, give, you give, give all the players notes at yeah, the end. Yeah, make sure. Yeah, just put private message. Just them. like fully, like like psychologically, fuck them. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, that's such a good idea. Why, are we, why do we not know this guy? I want to know this guy. Can, can, I can he be in your game? <laughs> can I join, please? All I want to that sounds like a good game to me. First of all, remember why the Fae were called the Fair Folk, or the Good Neighbours. It was not because they were fair. It was not because they were good. It was because if they caught you saying bad shit about them, they would curse you in horrible ways and fuck up your life. So the only safe thing to do was to call them by pleasant sounding names. By default, you know that what it really was meant was a warning. Fae should be dangerously whimsical. They are powerful, but either do not know or do not care about the damage they do or the suffering they cause. Sounds like gypsies unironically. Yeah, not, not gonna lie. Their ear can be easily triggered. Absolutely awful in the punishment they inflict upon you. And then they forget you even exist a day later even as you spend the rest of your life paying for it. Finally, there's only one thing more dangerous, more life-ruining than the hour of a fae, and that is the love of a fae. A fae that likes you will stick around and try to help you, even if you never ask for it, even if you beg for it to stop. A child with a fae that has taken a liking to them that will be giving wondrous baubles and sweets and all that the fae's love. The Fae will also curse or murder anyone who makes the child upset, even their parents. This can be especially fucked up if the kid can't even see the Fae, lacking the sight to see such spirits but still having their life manipulated by a psychopathic friend. But despite all of this, always remember, there are no evil Fae, they can't be evil, they know not what it is. That's a solid wee side mission. That, yeah, oh, oh, there's a, there's a, you find a lost child in the woods. Yeah. That type of shit. Or, you know, oh, there's a, there's a, there's a cursed child and everyone seems to be dying yeah. in a, there's a murder. Yeah, that's so cool. 
Honestly, I feel like that's all I'm going to say through this entire thing. Like, so cool. I, I, yeah, I, I really I, like that. I really that's like really that. good. Uh, okay, I'll talk. <laughs> I'll talk about one that I find really interesting. So this is about um, what I believe the actual where fairies actually come from. So fairies in Irish mythology, um, they're literally like you know just the magical people that live in the woods, very much like the children of the forest from Game of Thrones, really. Yeah. But what I believe what they were is now <laughs> the talk in um, Irish mythology in that there's been quite a few mass migrations into Ireland. Now, I don't know if they're the Western Hunter Gatherers or, like, you know, the people that built Stonehenge, for instance, like the Neolithic farmers. Mm -hmm. And they also built a lot of the Neolithic mega structures. Just a bunch of fucking rocks. Yeah, pretty much. Um, or maybe the Indo, well, the Indo Europeans, I believe, are the people that were, that came up with the idea. And I believe what happened was, um, whenever the Indo Europeans showed up, they, well, we know from the genetic, <laughs> with genetics, we know that either they killed them all, or they interbred forcefully, mm -hmm. uh -huh. or they got forced off their land, mm -hmm. and we know that it was very violent. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be safe to say that anyone that survived that would have got forced into the woods and into the forest, yeah. and maybe there could have been pockets of these people. Living off the land. And of forest. course they're going to be cursed and all the humans that their great ancestors forced them into living in these woods. Yeah. I don't know, I, I, I find, it, to me, I think that makes a lot of sense. On I, I like to believe that all folklore comes from an actual event or an actual story. Again, it's just like Chinese whispers. It gets handed down. That's yeah. what I believe. Yeah, I do, lot, I do think all, it all... Or all oral traditions. And the same reason why I believe, like, you know, look, look at any major religion, they've all got a flood Mm -hmm. Scenario: mm -hmm. We know that there was major floods um, six thousand years ago, all over the like you know Europe and yep. Middle East. Yep. So makes sense yep. why, why they would have that built into their psyche of great floods. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. It makes sense. Do, if you guys have any ideas or anything to add to that, let us know because I find it really fast. I've been really interested in prehistory humans recently. I've ran a bunch of fey and eldritch campaigns slash settings, and often mix. Here's some of my favourites. Blood cotton. Infects areas near from an unnamed fey that resembles a large blind toad and its tadpoles. Blood cotton is a thick white fur mould on top of red pus. <laughs> that sounds absolutely vile. I was so close to saying pus. <laughs> <laughs> Blood cotton cripples newborns for life, destroys crops, and is a key necromancy ingredient for Last of Us style shroom zombies. Oh. Uh -huh. Trees of significant life essence, old, worshipped, tampered with, etc., become pregnant with fey larvae in bulbous amber. I've used various fey for this. Farmers are terrified of caterpillars and butterflies that grow on nettles aside farmland. The larvae of mothmen grow in the same conditions. On harvest moon, the air is filled with hallucinogenic dust and drowning all other sound out with a hypnotic drone. All those caught are lured in their sleep towards the glowing lights. It is unknown what happened to folk who follow these face iron songs. Oh, you know what you could mix that in with? You could do uh, St. Anthony's Fire. Yeah. You know, like Rye oh, Poison. Yeah. yeah, like, you know, well, that was the one, the German one where they all got up and danced. Danced, yeah. Yeah, you do stuff like that. A long forgotten pact with a fay for immortality. The immortal may transfer their essence into a hat stained red from the blood of 13. The next person who dons this cup is possessed by all those who came before and becomes the new incarnation of of this collective coincidence. Sweet, man, I got schizophrenia. <laughs> Base. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> you know, have, you, have you guys seen all the, po all the fucking posts on uh, X asking, you guys, how do I, like, get, how do I, like, get schizophrenia? And they're asking it as if it's, like, a, a schizo superpower. It's like, it's really not, guys. <laughs> it's really not. It's really disability. It's real. <laughs> their, their old personage now forever mixed into this identity. You would be the latest in this long line of souls added to this album. There is a worm that slithers in the deepest, darkest corners of its victims unconscious, spreading via speech. 
It is only seen by those infected when under extreme psychological stress. Mate, that's Metal Gear Solid 5. Nightmares, life or death, hallucinogenics. It corrupts and changes a person as their soul is fed upon by a growing, growing pile of larva. They spread to others via speech and can slither through the collective unconscious. I mean, you could use a lot of stuff from Elgar Solid. Yeah. Summer is an imposter of the sun that hangs in the sky, never setting, always watching, producing extreme paranoia in individuals. If they look at it, a mark is ingrained into their retina always there when they blink. Victims become lost and unable to find their way, slowly becoming blind as the mark takes over their vision. Similarly, winter is an unnatural cold and voice that whispers during the night, luring people away. Victims, technology fails. They gradually lose capabilities, abilities, powers, senses, speech, movement, and eventually life as they get closer and closer to it. So, we've been watching a lot of Teletubbies recently, <laughs> and that sun sounds an awful lot like this the sun. One, yeah. And I was saying to Megan the other day, that, that, that child looks satanic, <laughs> and I'm just putting that out there. I've not got a name for this one yet, my party is dealing with it, but if you disrupt a devil deal at a crossroads, break ritualistic salt, foil a fey contract unlawfully, or generally go back on an unnatural dealing, a red coin will appear in your person to indicate a bad deal. This thing will start to follow you. Its presence felt just out of sight, getting closer, watching you. Then the time is right. If you find yourself too close to a reflection of some kind, you'll be taken. Upon your demise, a small voodoo-esque doll will be provided to the victim of the deal as compensation. That is That's an amazing good. way to deal with dickhead players. Yeah. See, see, play, like, see, like the chaotic, stupid, chaotic. Yes. You know, that would be an amazing yes. way to handle that. Honestly, this entire thread is very it, good. It's very, I very it, like it, this. It, it really makes me want to really have makes, a fair own game. I really want to play a fair game. I, I, I do. I think everything in it sounds really cool. I, I love the idea of a lot of social intrigue and having to actually like how do you deal with fey? Like, you know, can you can you can you talk to them? Can you even handle them? Can yeah. you do you have to play fair with them? Do you they've got so many different roles and everything like it's almost like you can turn gravity upside down. Yeah. With Fey, you can do literally fucking anything you wanted. And also you could pull from any folklore you really wanted and just play about with it. Um, but I don't feel like there's one thing I feel like if you were to do a Fey long game you couldn't do standard medieval no I feel like it feels like too much of like a parallel dimension yeah if that makes any weird sense like even in a generic like Wizards of the Coast sort of yeah. Forgotten Realms I don't feel like it fits I feel like you need to be in like the other almost or I, I don't I don't know I don't know. I feel like I really want to explore more into this. And I really hope you guys enjoyed. Also, we do actually have some Fae-like models. Yes, just so go you know. have a look. Um, this one's got big old fat teddies. So <laughs> Who doesn't want their Fae with teddies? <laughs> I know, like, come Wendy on here. Wendy <laughs> Yeah, give me that Wendy Bussy, guys. Like, am I right? Um, honestly, though, I, I love this idea. I love this concept. Fae, I feel like, is... It's, it, a lot of the time it's not utilised very well no I feel like they're very to me a lot of time whenever I, I hear about them it's like ugh they're like one of my least one that I find the least interesting no I love shit like this well I feel like stuff like that's this that's me because I'm a spooky bitch but <laughs> I feel like this stuff is, they're doing them in you know what it is it feels like okay I, 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 I slag off uh, steampunk all the time because it's trash but there's examples of diesel punk that are very, very good, you know? And I feel like with just a minor twist... What's the difference between steampunk and diesel punk? That's the thing. Very, very little. <laughs> but they are very different. Fuel instead of coal? Um, well, we're one. <laughs> That's why. But do you see what I mean? There's very little difference between the two. Yeah. But there's all the difference in the world. Yeah. At the same time. Yeah. And I can't quite... Maybe there's method in my madness. I hope one or two of you guys actually understand what I'm trying to get across. I don't know. 
Um, if you have any of your own concepts or ideas, I would love to hear them because I feel like if I, w- I I'm 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 in the middle of working on a lot of campaigns at the minute, and if I be honest with you guys, a lot of them are shit posts and a lot of them are parodies and a lot of them, um, I don't feel like I'm very good at serious writing. I feel like I can do shit that's fun and not to be taken overly seriously. I just I'm not very good at it. Um, but I feel like I might be able to do something like this, maybe, and I feel like there's a lot to work with that I would love to explore and really get into, and uh, I hope I hope it I hope it would work out nicely. Um, anything to add, Megan? Anything you just want some wind pussy? Well, I don't want some wind pussy. <laughs> you don't want to wind wind no, has, thanks. has bando. No, thank you. <laughs> you <don't wanna>... yeah. <laughs> no, you serious? No, thank you. I'm I'm good on that. Yeah, thank you. Um, but yeah. Go down below, check out the links, let us know what you think about the video, if you liked it, if you enjoyed it. Check out the links to the website, the models, subclasses, you know what, everything else. You know what they should have for this? Someone needs to make, like, a stalker, Chernobyl, Faye and Chernobyl. I'm making that, Megan. It's going to be cool. Okay. Um, and hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we post a video. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye!